everyone, it's Christine from Nurse in the Making. So many of you have asked me about my NCLEX experience, what I recommend, how long I studied, and different study tips. So I'm going to be answering all your different questions right now. But before we get started, I'll tell you a little bit of my background with the NCLEX and kind of what I went through. I graduated from an ABSN program in May 2020 from the University of Tennessee. After that, I moved back home to New York where me and my husband are originally from. I had this wonderful and unrealistic plan that I would take the NCLEX in June, get a job sometime in July, and then move on with my life. But that did not happen. I received my ATT. This is your authorization to test. This is the code that you need to register for the NCLEX. You cannot take the NCLEX if you don't have this code from your school. I didn't receive this ATT until August 12th. And because of COVID and everything going on, so many testing centers were at half capacity and some were even just closed altogether. So even when I got my ATT, there were barely any spots open in New York. So I basically had to wait until someone canceled, which would have been the day of, or waited until January or February for an opening, which would have been like a few months ago. And I was like, I'm not waiting that long. However, I saw that some testing centers from other states had a couple of spots open, probably from just people canceling and different availability. So I ended up driving all the way to Boston, Massachusetts with my husband because I scheduled myself for the first day I saw open, which was August 19th. So let's take a step back. On August 12th, I got my ATT and eight days later, I took the exam. With all of that said, you have to learn to be flexible through the process. I had this great plan, like I said, that I would take it in June and get a job in July, but obviously that didn't happen, so be flexible. So let's dive into some of your questions. The first question is asked by Shelby. She said, did you fail or pass on your first time? After a lot of preparation and a lot of studying, I passed on my first time. Now let's look at the next question. Kayla asked, what resources would you recommend to study? So since I had such a large amount of time to study, like I said, I used Hearst Review at first. I did their three day live stream online and they sent you a little bit, a book to fill in, which was really effective, I think, by just being able to fill it in as they were going through the live stream. The content they taught us during the live stream was extremely helpful. Although they did have you review some sections on your own after the live stream was over, like pediatrics, mother baby, and neuro. These sections were not nearly as good as the actual live stream. Then when I went to dive into some practice problems, I didn't really feel like Hearst was very helpful. Their practice questions weren't really NCLEX style questions in my opinion. So I started to look elsewhere for better practice questions. I signed up for UWorld and their questions were honestly a lot better than Hearst. They were very NCLEX specific. They were so similar to the NCLEX. I really feel like on the NCLEX, I got some of the exact same questions from my UWorld practice questions. Although I loved how Hearst taught you and walked you through it, if I had to choose one for the NCLEX, I would probably choose UWorld. I also did UWorld self-assessment test and ranked high chances of passing, which I think was really accurate being that I did pass on the first try. This score gave me confidence going into the exam. Hertz didn't have this self-assessment feature, so there really was no way of you to know how ready you are for the exam. So final answer of my official recommendation, I would choose UWorld. Their questions are so similar to the NCLEX. Now for the next question. Sam asked, how can I pass the NCLEX in 75 questions? I love that you asked this question because I wanna talk about this golden 75 question thing. Social media, YouTubers all make it sound like passing in 75 questions is the only way to take the NCLEX. But I honestly think that this trend and golden standard is not healthy and I'm gonna talk about why I feel this way. So when you take your NCLEX and you get to question 75, and then you press next and you get to question 76, you are going to feel like you failed or you're gonna feel like you're on the verge of failing. This is actually what happened to me. So I remember being at that 75 question, pressing next for my exam and seeing that it went to 76 questions, I started to freak out. I ended up getting 86 questions and my exam ended. And like I said, I passed with 86 questions. 
So my advice to you is don't walk in expecting to end at 75 questions. Take every question as it comes and take every question seriously. This leads us right into our next question. The next question is asked by Taygill14. They ask how to stay calm while taking it and not freak out when the number of questions keep on going. That's why I don't like this whole 75 question gold standard we'd invented because then it gets in your head after 75 questions and you start to freak out. So let's circle back to when I got 76 questions. I remember pressing next and feeling like a failure when I hit 76 questions. I chose to take my break. I went to the bathroom and I really remember looking at myself in the mirror, looking at myself thinking, you can still do this. You're still in it. You didn't fail. I also had a friend who got 120 questions and she walked out thinking she for sure failed the test and she ended up passing. So whether you pass the NCLEX with the magical 75 or 120 questions, you still pass the NCLEX. You're still an RN with a license number. It doesn't say on your license number, passed with 75 questions with a gold star. So don't let this get in your head. Don't be hyper-focused on passing with 75 questions. You need to be hyper-focused on passing and knowing the information. That's my rant about the 75 question gold standard. Let's go to the next question. The next question is asked by Bryn Cardenas. They asked, can you explain the format of the NCLEX, the number of questions you need to get right? A lot of people think you need to get a certain number of questions right to pass the NCLEX, but the short answer is it depends. You've probably heard this statement one too many times in nursing school. Um, so let me tell you why it depends. Imagine the NCLEX test has two lines, one green at the top representing pass and the red at the bottom representing fail. You start in the middle at the beginning of the exam the black line will be the middle. As you answer questions correctly, you move closer to the top green line. Let's say that you start to get some right at first, but then you get some difficult questions wrong. You move closer to the middle line. This is why you may get more than 75 questions because the NCLEX is going to give you more questions to prove your knowledge. This is why you hear of people getting all the way up to like 120 questions. They weren't able to move their score up to the green passing line until later in the exam. So this is what I mean when I say it depends. There isn't a set number of questions you need to get right. It's more of like an algorithm like I just showed you on the paper. Let's go to the next question. Jane Morgan 27 asked, did you feel prepared for it before going? So I, I don't really know if you can ever feel truly prepared for an exam like this. It's your entire nursing school in one exam. This is why the UWorld assessment score definitely gave me confidence going into the exam. I was also scoring above average on all the quizzes I took in UWorld. And like I said, I got a high chance of passing on the self-assessment scoring tool. You just kind of have to trust that things will come back to you on the exam and that you did enough to pass. So, Yes and no to that question. Yes, because I had prepared so much in advance, but no, because I had no idea what to expect on the NCLEX. Let's go to the next question. Alexa Tay asked, how long did you study each day and did you do one subject each day? Since I had such a long time um, in between taking it and graduation, I decided to dedicate four weeks to studying during that time every day. I studied about four to five hours a day and there's only so much you can study in one day without feeling burnt out and really like you're not gonna end up retaining the information if you study longer than four to five hours in my opinion. I remember driving to the beach to take breaks, going for a run, for a bike ride with my husband, just to kind of break up the day a little bit. I studied in the mornings and took the afternoons and nights off. I would say I probably studied like 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. for four weeks straight. I think four to five weeks is the optimal amount of time because I felt more than five weeks, I'd be forgetting the information from week one. And I think four to five weeks is the perfect time because you feel like you're not cramming, but you also feel prepared at the same time because it's just the amount of time you need. 
So let's walk through kind of what I did in a day. Let's say I did cardiac one day, the next I would do endocrine, and then the next day I would do mother baby. That's the thing about UWorld that you can click what subject you want. For example, fundamentals, peds, and med surge. And then within those subjects, you can choose what system you want, like cardiac, endocrine, neuro, and for mother baby, postpartum, prepartum, intrapartum, all that stuff. So you can really customize your study questions, which is great about UWorld. The last week I did random questions. I would click all subjects and randomly select 30 questions. This got me in the habit of the NCLEX, what it will actually feel like, seeing different topics and subjects right after another one, maybe getting a mother baby question, getting a pharmacology question, and then getting a med surge question. This kind of trains your brain. I would also sit straight for 30 to 40 questions to get my brain to learn and to think and to focus that long. I actually made a UWorld 30 day study calendar for the NCLEX. This is kind of how I organize my studying during the weeks. You can grab your copy for free. The link is in the description below. Since UWorld gives such detailed explanations under every question, you really wanna focus on these detailed explanations. That's why I suggest anywhere from 30 to 50 questions a day. So on the calendar, you're going to write what subject you're gonna do that day, what body system, and then the number of questions you wanna do each day. What are your goals for that day? Do you wanna do 40 questions or do you wanna do 100 questions? I also threw in a self-care section on the study template. I made this because studying for the NCLEX is extremely stressful. You feel like you have to study 24 hours a day to get the max amount of studying, but to study effectively, you have to take breaks and take care of yourself. For me, like I said, it was going on a run, a bike ride, walking, cooking, whatever that is for you, you have to take a break. So again, this PDF is for free in the description below. Um, and it kind of gives you a nice study schedule. This is kind of how I organized my studying for the NCLEX. And remember to take that self-care day and breaks every single day. Now for the next question. Question number eight comes from Katie. How important is knowing medications, generic or brand name medications? I was actually surprised at the amount of pharmacology questions I was asked on the NCLEX. UWorld has a great pharmacology section, so I felt really confident when it came to those medication questions. I don't really remember them being very specific, impossible questions. It was more like those killer side effects or super important antidotes or really important therapeutic ranges for medications. I always talk about suffixes and how important these are, and you probably hear me say it all the time, but I go through an entire video about this pharmacology trick that saved me on the NCLEX. There should be a card popping up that you can watch this video. The NCLEX only tests on generic names, which is great because this is where we see those common suffixes. I would not have known half those medications if I didn't know my suffixes and what medications they align with. The key point here is this, when you know your suffixes, you know the medication class, which gives you enough information to answer the question correctly. It really could be the determining factor between getting the question right and wrong on the NCLEX. That's why I've made an entire pocket guide on 80 plus of the most common suffixes, prefixes, and antidotes. I loved having this at my fingertips while studying for the NCLEX. It's categorized in systems, which makes it really easy to refer back to when you're looking for a specific suffix. I have cardiac, antivirals, antibiotics, respiratory system, which makes it really convenient and easy. You can find the link to this pocket guide and a coupon code for 15% off in the description below. Now for the next question. Nursing and NUMS asked, where do you put your belongings at the testing site? So when I walked in the testing center, they verified who I was with my license. They did a little fingerprint scan and all that fun stuff. They had a locker for me to put my stuff in and they obviously told me to put my phone on silent and that was pretty much it. You cannot bring anything in the testing center with you, even water, which for me, I absolutely hated because I always need water right next to me at all times. So just remember that maybe practice not drinking water during a practice question because you cannot take anything in with you. Now for the next question. Lifts in slippers, it's a cute name, asked, Kaplan suggests we study until the day of. Should we take a break the night or day before? 
So I really didn't study too much the day before. I just kind of remember like refreshing my memory. For example, my husband quizzed me on like lab values, therapeutic levels for medication, common antidotes. Other than that, I really didn't study too much. It kind of depends on your personality. If you feel like that would stress you out, then I think that you need to trust, hey, I did enough the last four weeks, I'm gonna take a break. Or if you wanna look over, like I said, kind of those common refreshers, then you can do that too. So I think that it's per person basis. It's really whatever you prefer. Thanks for everybody who asked a question and participated in the NCLEX q and I had so many more questions and I hope to do another video in the future. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks and happy studying future nurses.